Hello chemistry. Up until this point we have continued to be working with different types of compounds. So let's go ahead and compare a couple different compounds. So here we've got two compounds. We've got CH4 and C4H16. Hmm. Now what would you tell me is the relationship between CH4 and C4H16? Well one of them is a type of compound we're already familiar with, the empirical formula. Now if you recall the empirical formula is the most reduced, or the simplest form of a ratio. If we look at our different types of elements, our most reduced would be our CH4. Wait, CH, that's a hydrocarbon, C1, me eat peanut butter, me for meth, methane. So we've got methane on the left. Now this is the empirical formula, the most reduced, but this might not be the way this particular compound looks in nature. If we go out in nature, we find this compound somewhere, it might actually look like this, C4H16. Hmm. Now some of you are thinking, wait, me eat peanut butter, maybe that's butane. It's not. Butane will be C4H, four times two, eight, nine, ten. It's to be C4H10. This is slightly different. Our hydrocarbon here is what's said to be the molecular formula, or the actual compounds mat, or the actual compounds ratio of atoms. Now you'll notice that our empirical formula has a molar mass of 16.042, what would you predict for the molar mass of C4H16? Well, if you compare, we've got four times the number of carbons, four times the number of hydrogen, so we would expect the mass to be four times as large. This is a direct relationship between our empirical formulas and our new type of formula called the molecular formula. So molecular formulas, by definition, are the exact formula for a molecule, giving the types of atoms and the actual number of each type. So here's what we've got. We've got, a, we've got our formula, it's the actual number. It's not reduced, it is the actual formula. So in order to find the molecular formula, you actually need to know two things. Somewhere or another, you need to know the empirical formula, and you need to know the molar mass of the molecular formula. You gotta have those two pieces. And if you have those two pieces, you can then solve for the molecular formula. To do that, we're going to follow these three steps. If needed, go ahead and solve for the empirical formula. Just like we've been practicing all the last couple of days, you'd start by finding the empirical formula. Remember your four steps. Percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by small, multiply till whole. Follow those four steps, get the empirical formula. And then, once you've got that formula, if you need to, you can find its molar mass. Now this molar mass is going to be the small mass. So we're going to take the molecular formula's molar mass, the big mass, and we're going to divide it by the empirical formula's molar mass. This is going to give us a number. This is going to give us a whole number, a whole ratio. We're going to take that ratio number and we're going to multiply it through the empirical formula. And actually if we go back, so okay, if we found the molar mass of this original empirical formula, it's 16. I'd have to give you the 64. Well, 64 divided by 16 gives you 4. So if you were trying to find this molecular formula, you would take the empirical formula, CH4, and since you know the mass is 4 times bigger, you'd have to make the compound 4 times bigger. All right, so in our ratio, or in our formula form, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to abbreviate just a little bit, just so that's a little smaller, and I apologize for the screen. My microphone is built in, high quality, but unfortunately it picks up some of the scratches here. What we do is we take the molecular formula, molar mass, I'm abbreviating a little bit here, molecular formula, that's the big one, I'll go ahead and put that in parentheses, we're going to divide that by the empirical formula, molar mass, that would be the small one, and that's going to give you a ratio number. That ratio number tells you how many times bigger the molecular formula is than the empirical, or the simplified version. Alright, let's go ahead and look at one. So here we've got an empirical formula. For this particular compound, CH2, the molecular formula is 42 grams per mole. And then we find out that the molecular formula, the actual molecule, has a molar mass of 42 grams per mole. Which of these four choices below could be the molecular formula? Well, if we know that the molar mass of the actual compound is 42, 
the smaller molar mass of the reduced form is 14, we need to find a relationship. Take your 42 divided by 14. When you do that, you find that you have a ratio of 3. That means the actual molecule is 3 times bigger than the original empirical formula. Well, okay, let's make our CH2, whoop, let's make our CH2 three times bigger. We're going to multiply each element in our compound by three. So instead of C1, we're going to have C3. Instead of H2, we're going to have H6. Three times larger makes this compound C3H6. All right, let's try another one. Here we determine the empirical formula to be CH5N with a molar mass of 31.06 grams per mole. But we know the true molar mass is actually 93.18 grams per mole. Determine the molecular formula of the compound. Well, to figure out how many times bigger the larger compound is, we're going to take the larger molar mass, 93.18 grams per mole, divide by the smaller one, in this case 31.06 grams per mole, and we'll get a number. And in this case, it comes out very, very close oh, to 3 again. That tells us that the molecular formula, the actual molecule, is three times bigger than our original empirical formula. So we're going to take that empirical formula, oops, sorry, CH5N, and we're going to multiply it by 3. So it's going to become C3, H, 3 times 5 is 15, N, 3. This would be the molecular formula. Now let's think about this for a minute. Instead of giving you the empirical formula, what can I give you? Hmm. Well, if I was really being tricky and really wanted to assess what you as very bright chemistry students know, I would ask, I would give you the percents ooh, of each element in the compound. If I gave you the percents, that shouldn't stop you. Percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by small, multiply till whole. That'll give you the empirical formulas, molar mass. That's the small one. And then you need to find something out about it. You'd have to find its molar mass. Well, that's okay. You know how to find the molar mass of a compound. A carbon plus five hydrogens plus one nitrogen would give you this molar mass. I will always need to provide you this a value, the molar mass of the molecular formula. I have to give that to you. Now, sometimes books, textbooks will disguise that molar mass of the, the molecular formula. Sometimes they'll call that the molecular weight. And sometimes they'll give you a range. For example, they'll say it's 93.1 plus or minus 5. Well, don't let that confuse you. All that says is the actual value has to be somewhere between either 5 greater than this number or 5 less than this number. Well, if you just use this number here, the original number, that plus or minus 5 gives you a wiggle room. It lets you round this final mass number to the nearest whole number. You can't have part of a molecule. It's got to be a whole molecule. All right? Here's what I'd like. On that homework, go ahead and try that homework item for me, please. If you have questions, feel free to email me. I will see you in class.